This is my custom designed off-road robotics platform. I originally designed this to traverse the sand dunes of the beach, but with recent changes here in Australia, that's no longer possible. But I put a lot of effort into designing and building this. It has a fully custom 3D printed gear train, brushless gear motors and upgraded ground clearance. So I decided to put together an obstacle course from junk around the house to test it out. Let's get started. But first, let's discuss what's new in this version two off-road platform. Version one was great fun, but proved to be too weak for serious off-road adventuring and tended to get bogged down easily. However, these issues are all gone in the version two platform, which uses four of these Uubotics incredible brushless drive motors and controllers. These mate a brushless outrunner to a battle-hardened 27 to one planetary gearbox and are absolutely bulletproof in this application. To increase ground clearance, the platform uses a portal axle design with a further two to one reduction to the output. I recently tested 3D printed gear strength with stationary torque loads, so I'm really curious to see if they'll survive or get chewed up. For now, the platform isn't fully sealed against the elements and has this snazzy acrylic top cover, so I can keep an eye on the internals. In all, it's a hugely powerful platform with a lot of potential, and I'll be sharing the files in future, but for now, let's check out the obstacle course. So it all begins here at the starting line, but straight away we get to the foliage fortress. This is a tangle of banana leaves, which are gonna prove a huge challenge for our little friend here. Then as we get past the foliage fortress, we get to the saw point, a little saw, very sharp to navigate. And then we get to the tangled hose. This may prove a problem for our robot or not, we yet to find out. Then straight after that, we get to the tiles of trepidation. The robot must now navigate over these tiles perfectly before arriving next at the Creality Rollers of Retribution. These are rollers off a CR30 belt printer and each one has ball bearings on it and there's only small areas of contact on the grass underneath for the robot to navigate through. Then next up we have a seesaw obstacle. It must go up this desk surface till it reaches the middle point and then the weight of the robot pushes the other end down but you must wait here until the end touches the ground before moving on. No using this as a ramp, that's cheating. Then finally, if we've managed to navigate all of those obstacles, there's a straight run path to extinct the dodo. Now this might sound easy, but this is a big, plump, fluffy dodo and the robots tend to get stuck on him. So let's see how the first wheels fare. I want to try out a range of my favorite weird 3D printed wheels, but the first test I wanted to get a good baseline for the platform's capabilities, so I stole these real wheels off an old broken RC Truggy. Who else remembers a GS Racing? Yeah. They were a breeze to attach as all the wheels used the same standard 12mm hex hub that I'm using on my platform. Alrighty, so all lined up at the start line, I proceeded tentatively into the foliage fortress. At the scale of this platform, these banana leaves are easily enough to high center the platform and move all over the place, making it really hard to proceed once bogged down. But with enough speed and surface area, the platform skips happily over the surface. There's a few arguments to be made here for Ackerman versus differential steering but I found when stuck, I could spin the wheels in opposite directions and it tended to pop the platform free. Next, it's straight over the saw point to the tangled hose, which perhaps presents a unique challenge to some wheel designs, but with real tires, the platform bounced over it like nothing. The tiles of trepidation are so named due to their hard, smooth surface with hemispherical bumps, but with some careful control, the platform conquered them with only one minor hang up. I wasn't sure what to expect with the Creality Rollers, but it's pretty cool to see that they do start spinning under the tires like some kind of tiny dynamometer. It does get past, however, and looking at it in slow motion seems to indicate that it's the sideways movement that is bumping the car forwards. I think a wider track with some bumpers could prove a real challenge in future if that's the case. Onto the seesaw and once again, real rubber tires with actual traction help the platform stay planted on the smooth table surface before gently dismounting and absolutely annihilating that poor dodo. Let's watch that again. All in all, a perfect run with all obstacles defeated and proof that the platform is more than capable so long as the wheels do their job. So let's test out some wilder designs. 
This is the internet's favorite wobbler wheel from my first tests earlier this year. These wheels look like they're wobbling all over the place as the machine drives, but actually keep the platform perfectly centered. It's a really interesting optical illusion and really beautiful to watch, but unfortunately they proved of little use when navigating the challenging dunes. But what about here? Ah, uh, well, I'm not exactly sure what I was expecting, but even with that wobbly outline, they're still just smooth discs of plastic with pretty much zero traction, and the platform gets high centered. Once again, though, spinning the wheels on the spot does tend to help free it before it gets stuck again. As a last ditch attempt, I tried for speed, and it just did what it does best, bury itself to hide its shame. Heading up past the saw, where its total lack of traction is evident, the hose also posed quite a challenge. And the tiles were no different. I honestly thought by this stage that the wobblers wouldn't defeat any of the further obstacles, but the rollers took me by surprise. Maybe that undulating motion helps nudge and push it forwards, or maybe it just got really lucky. Either way, it did get through. However, with no traction, it was a real struggle to even line up on the seesaw. However, the new motors and controllers are capable of really gentle acceleration, so I got to the end, only to get defeated in the most embarrassing manner possible. Yeah, that's right. Go hit that dodo. For shame. Beauty isn't everything, and although these wheels have really cool looking motion, they're pretty much useless in every way. At least well made from hard plastic. So what about some wheels made from a slightly flexible plastic instead? These are the only flexible wheels in the lineup. Although the original designer, Ikotomi, never intended them to be printed from TPU, I accidentally did, but it does actually present some really interesting properties, such as their ability to flatten out slightly when weighed down, and they even expand a little bit under acceleration due to the centrifugal force. The flexi wheels started off strong, but got bogged in the leaves pretty quickly. Then something really weird happened. I'm still not entirely sure what caused the platform to flip over like this, but it looks as if a banana leaf got jammed between the splits in one of the wheels, effectively locking it in place and forcing the entire platform to rotate around it. This is insane because A, the old platform didn't even have enough torque to spin the wheels half the time on sand, and B, these gear motors mate to the wheels through 3D printed gears, and they could handle that level of abuse. I checked it over and it seemed to be fine, so I just reset. And then this happened. Damn, was that a smooth run. I definitely got lucky, but you can see the wheels expanding slightly as the platform skips over the surface while also compressing as it comes back down. With such success, I thought it'd also get past the hose with no problem, but it really did struggle. Again, the wheels are printed from a semi-flex TPU, which is actually really slippery. So they really did struggle to grip the smooth surface of the hose. And after some attempts, it became clear that the tiles also were just too much of an obstacle to overcome. A real shame after such a strong start. But what about those dastardly rollers of retribution? Not only was this the most controlled crossing yet, but there's that expansion again. Without it, I reckon this platform would just stay stuck on the rollers, but it seems that it reaches a magic speed where it just nudges forwards in a really controlled manner. Really neat to see. Again though, no traction makes the seesaw a difficult service to navigate, but not impossible. And it's a straight run into the dodo and uh, um, okay, well that's not good. Oh god, censor that. Up next we have some of the most dangerous wheels yet. These thin and sharp spiked wheels designed by the avocado. And they would have no chance on sand, but should have incredible bite on grass. Well, that was fun. Guess they suck. But wait, what's this? Yep, these wheels are so thin and large that they can even drive the platform upside down. And the spikes have so much bite, in fact, that they're able to throw the whole platform into the air and drag it over the foliage. But with it upside down, it did end up just burying itself, 
So I did a quick restart and gave it one more chance and discovered that a twitchy driving approach worked best for these wheels with small bursts of power to get over obstacles without the torque reaction flipping the whole thing over. And we're through. Ah yes, the dreaded hose. Because these wheels are so thin, they tend to deviate along the path as if it's like a track. And the spikes also dig into the grass so well that differential steering is a real struggle compared to the previous wheels. But it did eventually get past that dastardly handle with some grace. Next up, the tiles, and this was a real unknown. By this stage, I even had a spectator watching on, this super adorable king parrot. Our bananas never get a chance to ripen because they find them delicious, but I don't mind. They're super cute. Well, all the sharpness in the world means nothing on a cold, hard tile. Without any surface to bite on, they might as well have been smooth discs. The difference between the tiles and grass, though, is so extreme that I captured this incredible bit of acrobatics as one wheel, spinning at max speed, slipped off it. Absolutely amazing, but all the tricks in the world won't convince me that you can get past these tiles, so that's a fail. The spikes definitely have an edge on the rollers, however, and they meshed with them almost like gear teeth would mesh together. So it strolled across them without a care. So now, how do you get a platform on hard plastic wheels to go up a smooth slope surface? Well, you full send it. Honestly, can't believe that worked and I managed to keep it on track as it slid around. And then our plump dodo gets a face full of spike wheels. Not a bad run to be honest, with some really clear benefits and drawbacks depending on the surface they're running on. Out of all the unusual wheel designs I've printed so far, these are in my opinion the most beautiful. These gorgeous wheels designed by SheFlyer have a thin undulating contact surface which is actually roughly the same as the purple wobbler wheels and were quite successful on sand previously, so I have high hopes here. By this stage, I'm getting better at figuring out what speeds to run the foliage fortress at, but the wider profile of these wheels didn't really struggle at all. There are only a few careful adjustments needed, and I tell you that spinning on the spot trick where the platform gets high centered works every time. Next up, past the saw, which hasn't really proven much of a challenge for anything, and over to the hose where things started to go very badly wrong. Not only did it struggle to get up and over the slippery hose, but then this happened. Yeah, the wheel broke, but not just a little bit, they properly exploded. Why? Well, this design is very elegant, but actually quite fragile, being printed in such a way that all the force is transmitted across the print layers, which are typically the weakest part of a 3D print. A little bit like a wood grain. Combine that with the fact these wheels are done in a polyalchemy PLA, which can have quite weak layer adhesion, and the incredible torque of the new brushless gear motors, and the wheels were quite quickly reduced to stumps every time they encountered a solid object. The tiles proved too much as well, with each impact on the corner throwing more green plastic into my green grass. Still, I did give it a chance at the rollers, which it did manage to cross, and at the seesaw it managed okay, but reviewing the footage, it looks like that front right wheel is dragging at low speeds, so I might well have damaged either the hub or one of the gears. I'll have to do some investigating. Yeah, take that dodo. Now I have to go find all the shards of plastic littering my yard. I honestly wasn't expecting to destroy a wheel with this platform, but with the layer orientation as it is, this is probably the one to do it. A real shame because each wheel takes over four and a half hours to print, and otherwise I think they're a really, really lovely, elegant design. But what's this? A challenger appears. This is a remote control tank. It's the Eshin Eat 06, and I originally bought this to test on the course down at the beach. Now, unfortunately, again, that's not really possible, but before lockdown, I did actually get to unbox this and take it for a test, and man, is it fun.
So with the Eshin 806 drift tank lined up for the obstacle course, I think I'm just gonna let the tank do the talking. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty clear that tracks have a clear advantage when traversing difficult terrain, and the EAT-06 is clearly capable, but it does have some drawbacks. All of that contact area means that it actually struggles to spin on the spot with its stock battery and motor configuration, because there's just so much traction, whereas my little skid steer platform has no issues doing rapid donuts on any surface. It's also super loud, but I think some strategic lubrication would probably help with that too. There's a few variations from other brands at varying price points, but at only 45 bucks US, ready to run, including like the battery, it's really hard to go past the Eshin version. Thank you so much for watching. This has been really fun. I wasn't really sure what to expect from these different obstacles and this thing's ability to get over them. And we saw such wildly different results. Some of the wheels just couldn't get over any of the obstacles. Some of them did really well in like a couple, but not all of them. Uh, and even just like regular tires you think would be fantastic because they got more traction, but they even struggled in some areas. Now we did see awesome results from the tank, the Eshin Eat 06. And I think that's actually a fantastic fantastic remote control little platform and it's ripe for mods. The battery it comes with is very gutless, for example, I'd replace that straight away. But either way, I think it's a fantastic bank for buck platform and there'll be links in the video description below if you'd like to pick one up. So in terms of future th testing for this, I wanna see what the gears look like. I'm gonna be opening up the platform next and seeing how well they survived because after my testing recently, we definitely saw a big variation in the materials. And if you enjoyed this video here on Maker's Muse, then maybe consider subscribing because my aim to empower your creativity through technology. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.